Yeah, I'm saying when you're done with your review. Oh, yeah. Huh? Unless you have an epiphany, you will spend the remainder of your days alone. I had to leave because I did a, I got a, I got an opportunity with Samsung to like oh, okay. almost like collaborate with them on a on the stuff oh, that I was cool. building. It so I'm like, than... I didn't look. It was just me like ah fuck it, <laughs> leap of faith. Like, <laughs> Samsung, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I was like yeah, leap of faith, taking mm. this because I couldn't like it got to a point where I couldn't juggle the two, you know, and yeah, yeah, and I was like. Just, oh, yeah, let's let's just, let's just die and just do this. <laughs> yeah, and, and but the, the company was cool enough to call back to, to give me like freelance opportunity. Oh, no, nice. yeah, so to like part time, to... not even freelance. Yeah, but yeah. like part time at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. until I just left them eventually. But then oh, I nice. had the opportunity to just to like do something because some companies get better. Yeah, like they go, don't ever come back. Because that's that's how the culture is set, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. with um, with where I used to work at SAP. So once you leave, you never come you back. You never like not even after ever. ten years. No, after you're making... never coming back unless they call you. Oh, oh, because you made impact. Yeah, you have made impact out there. But, but why though? It's, I don't know. It's 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 just the culture now. Like before, you can leave, go somewhere else, learn about mm. something else, and then come back. And then you know, can impart that knowledge. But I'm now they're like, because I'd imagine, like, you know, you go out somewhere, you gain experience, and then you come back and you I mean, I'm benefit the company. company. Like, is what's going to go for a quick audio test? Uh, okay. Should be good. Okay. All right. Um, project your voice a more. Project. Okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Good. Um, three, two. All right, hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us once again right here on Zero Two Free. My name is Mugwena Mulodo. Um, so, Kananelo um, Mugnelo, what do you do? What is a digital imaging technician? Um, well, digital imaging technician, actually, it's something that I learned in varsity pretty mm -hmm. recently. And it's basically someone who's, um, I guess, in charge of the video aspect in a production. So, in post production, I mean, in pre production, you're there. You know, to kind of like liaise and consult with the camera department to make sure that they're doing what you, what's going to make the production easier, you know, as efficient as possible from a data standpoint. So, you know, container files, um, the file extension. Oh, no, that is the container file. So, yeah, container files, um, codecs, mm -hmm. and just essentially managing the space okay. that the. Um, production is going to take up and then during production you're there as the cinematographer's like third eye after his AC to make sure that the image is as good as possible for post mm -hmm. and when you get to post um, you have a range of um, responsibilities the key one being color grading where okay. you know you kind of just bring the colors to life essentially other things you can do is mastering but you know 
in some productions, the editor is the one who does that. But mm -hmm. the way that we were taught in school is that, um, yeah, after everything is done and you get the sound from the sound designer or sound engineer, you get the graphics from the VFX guy, you get the timeline from the editor, mm -hmm. you marry everything together into one complete timeline, and you essentially master it by outputting it into a certain format that's required for the final product. And yeah, you're just basically, I like to call it, like when people ask me on set, like what do you actually do? I'm like, I'm the Omega. So like at Omega. the end of every Omega. stage of <laughs> the production, I'm the guy who's there to make sure that everything is like on course, basically. Nice. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. Shucks. I really like that. All right, let's, so get, let's get into it. Um, so the topic today that we are looking into is basically um, how to cost <coughs> your services, right? It's a huge thing because a lot of the times we find ourselves not costing enough. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It really does. And Michael just doesn't care, but... Michael, is in his Michael own Scott world. is in his own world. Oh, no, he's Michael so Scott racist. No, Michael, he's racist. Oh, Michael is an angry man. He's an angry man. Oh, but I love you, too. Oh, love you. <laughs> so that could be. insecure man. Oh, I love you. I love you, man. No! Damn it! No! My favorite episode. My favorite episode when Toby comes back. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Cool. Thank you. Oh, thank you for having us. What's going on? Running from the fair. I'm going to Spain. Running from the fair. I'm going to meet the accountant in Spain. Thank you. Did you park downstairs or yours or Uber? No, I would. We'll also share details with you guys. Are you guys yeah. keen on being part of our newsletter? Yeah, no problem. Okay, cool. So I can add you there. Oh, yeah. Thanks so much, James. Yeah. Definitely. Do you guys? Sorry? Yeah. Yeah, I'm missing. And I was going to ask, um, do you guys have like an Instagram that I can follow? Or? Yeah, right now it's just Get Moya app. Okay. But as this podcast, because it's like very recent Instagram, so as this podcast starts to get traction off, mm. hopefully we'll bump up the numbers. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, we'll send you all the like, promo material and everything once when it's ready. Yeah. Started. And we'll also communicate like the timeline of when your episode is going to be ready. Uh, Thanks so much. However, we just request us. Stay dangerous. Yeah?